This video is going to be about my journey from a net worth of zero dollars to reaching my first one hundred thousand dollars and beyond. Now I'll share the ten key milestones that I reached along the way. And my main goal with this video is to inspire people. Maybe you haven't even started with your wealth building journey, and this video inspires you to start. Maybe you are already on your wealth building journey. I can inspire you to keep going regardless of any short-term setbacks. And yeah, so if you want to know how to achieve these milestones without doing anything crazy, without speculating, trading, gambling owning your own business or whatever make sure to watch this video in full because i'm sure i'll share some educational nuggets along the way all right hi there again my name is renee and if you've watched some of my other videos you might have noticed that i'm trying to share some more personal authentic maybe genuine content on this channel yeah so i had this video idea of just documenting my journey over the last six and a half years now how we went from basically a net worth of zero dollars to now a net worth that yeah i think is quite decent and what i should say is that i live in germany and i feel like in germany in particular we have this culture that it's not appropriate to talk about money. So I, was, I feel a bit uncomfortable yeah, talking about yeah, what I'm about to talk about in this video. But then again, I feel like if I can only inspire one or two people to start their wealth building too, this video might have already had a positive impact. And I actually know that there is a German podcast with that, exactly that title. It's called like, You Don't Talk About Money in German, um, which is quite successful. And it kind of inspired me as well. Now, what I will also say, oh, this video doesn't come across as braggy. Like, I think my net worth is decent. Uh, I'm quite happy with it. But I, I, in my mentorship broken, for example, I work with people who are way, way, way wealthier, what, way more successful, but also people who are just starting out. So I guess wealth is always relative. And I think money should never be your main goal. Money should always only be a means for you to enable some of your other goals and if I, if, if I went back to zero now today, I think it wouldn't change my life at all. And I, I think money probably also doesn't make you significantly happier. All right, yeah, and I guess with that being said, let's just jump right into it. And I'll start with my milestone number one, or uh, I titled it this first chapter as The Beginnings. So I still remember, it was actually 2017 when I started working in my first main job as a teacher. And for the first time earned some, yeah, more significant sums of money than I did, well, while I was studying. Uh, while I was in my teacher training program and so on and so forth. And yeah, so I started working in Dusseldorf and I actually had to move here. So I moved into my first own apartment. And I think back then I had around 10,000, maybe 15,000 euros saved up. And I spent all of it for furniture, a new kitchen, maybe a few electronic devices and so on and so forth. It, it's quite expensive when you move into your first own apartment. And yeah, so so it was pretty much back to zero um, when I started working in mid 2017. And if you watched my last video, my last Q&A video, uh, here I talked about the fact that I cannot pinpoint when exactly I came across the concept of investing. I just remember that I was at a party, people talked about ETFs, and I had no clue what they were talking about. So that's kind of my backstory. So I was, how, how old was I back then? I think I was 27. Um, and sometime in the following month or weeks maybe, I started to get more interested. I, I started ordering some investing books on Amazon. I think, I think one of the first books I actually read was The Intelligent Investor, which by the way, I know a lot of people, they recommend it as kind of a, a must read book. I don't think so. I think The Intelligent Investor is probably one of the worst books you can start with because I don't know, the text is written so dry, the examples used are, are very outdated. And I think it's just a very tough read for beginners. So I think there are just way better modern books written in more modern language that yeah, can get you motivated and more excited about this topic uh, in a better way. The only argument you can, you can present in favor of reading The Intelligent Investor is kind of it's, if you really want to get into the art of intelligent value investing, it's maybe considered kind of a rite of passage that you have to go through when you want to become a real value investor. So this was one book. Then I mentioned um, Good Stocks Cheap in my Q and A video, which which I really recommend as a. I, I don't know. Maybe it's not even recommended for people who are just starting out because it's like somewhat advanced. But I, I liked it as as one of my first books. Yeah, and I guess all of this took place sometime in 2018. I would I would guess summer 2018. I still remember I was on a on a um, a trip in Iceland with two friends of mine. And I remember that back then I was reading The Intelligent Investor, and this was autumn 2018. And I also remember that some of my few investments were made in late 2018. So I was buying some individual stocks, stocks like uh, one was Bayer. I know that um, 
in late 2018, there was actually some kind of tech crash. And back then I already used some of the lessons I learned. I think Matter and also Apple back then were trading at attractive valuations. So I was buying Matter and um, Apple as well. And I think back then also Monish Babrai made an investment into a company called GraphTech, which was more of a, a special situation investment kind of, I would say. Um, yeah, and I, I kind of copied him, cloned that investment too. I think I understood his investment case or the investment case in general uh, quite quite well too. Yeah, so so those were a couple of my first investments where I invested the first few thousand uh, dollars. And I mean, at some point you have to get started, right? Uh, putting some real money on the table is important, I think, because obviously you can start trying to to paper trade, but I don't I don't think this will make you a better investor because only once you have real money invested, you will realize that a big part of being a successful investor is actually your behavior and, and remaining calm when everyone else is panicking and maybe being a bit more greedy when other people are scared, like in, in late 2018. Um, and I think you can only learn that if you have actually real money invested in stocks or, or other assets, of course. Yeah, and I guess ever since, I don't know what clicked, but I was really obsessed about investing. I was and still am. I'm listening to investing podcasts almost every single day. I have a ton of investing books that I read regularly. I should say that nowadays I, I actually tend to reread good books more than I actually uh, add new books to my to my bookshelf. But but what I should say is that especially early on, this whole journey of, of learning about investing is a lot of fun because obviously your learning cur curve is going to be super steep, which at the same time maybe comes at a risk because you might very quickly think that you have understood and know everything while only maybe a few years later you will realize that back then you knew nothing uh, but still I, I still remember that this part of my journey was a lot of fun all right before i move on i would love to know where you are at on your investing and wealth building journey at the moment what are some of the obstacles that you think you have to overcome what were some of the key milestones for you please share it in the comments down below and with that being said let's move on all right then the next milestone is maybe timed around summer 2019. This is when I kind of developed this idea that I eventually would love to teach people how to invest, how to invest intelligently with a long-term investing horizon and based on value investing principles. And so I started building this website and I came up with a structure for it, which is quite comprehensive. And then I just started writing. So basically it was like writing a book. And the whole process of me writing what I'm teaching now took me more than three years, but it started in summer 2018. I think this is a big milestone because I'm not sure if you've seen this chart or illustration before. It's basically a pyramid which shows, well, how well you learn something based on how you learn it. So there's this idea that after listening to something, two weeks later, you remember maybe 10% of it. If you read it, you might remember 30%. Hearing and reading it, maybe an even yeah, a more superior form of learning. Writing something is even better. Uh, practicing is obviously great. And then teaching maybe the most sophisticated way of learning. And that's kind of what I experienced when I was writing the website too, because you have to make sure you really simplify things. So people who are not as quote unquote advanced as you are um, can get it too. And if we now get back to my wealth building journey, well, obviously say mid 2019, late 2019. So I've been investing for around a year now. Uh, I made progress. <sighs> Obviously, especially early on, the progress you're going to make in terms of your net worth is going to be super significant. Of course, early on, your saving contributions, they will be quite meaningful. So I still remember that back then, and I guess to some extent that is still true today, I really enjoyed saving money. This is actually something that uh, one of the mentees I work with at the moment shared with me on one of our calls that she's looking forward to actually save more money, uh, which is kind of ironic because you kind of have to delay gratification. But if you truly understand the power of compounding, there, there, it can make a lot of fun to actually save money. So let me just look up the savings rates that I tracked back then. I guess I can show you the uh, charts on screen right now. So here I have a savings rate in, in June 2019 of 56%. The next month, 33%. Then we got 36%, 45%, 41%, 52%, 35%, 48.9%, 55.3%. .3%. And, and I guess you get the idea. So I, I was really paying a lot of attention on saving a lot of my income. And that that is actually the gist of building wealth. Investing is really often made much harder than it actually is. 
all you have to do is you have to earn money, you then have to spend less than you make, and then you have to invest the difference and do that for a very long period of time. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. Obviously, there are a few things that you can fine tune, like for example, the, the income you earn, your savings rate, and maybe most importantly, the return you earn with your investments. But if you just do that, invest the difference between what you earn and what you spend, and do it for a long period of time, you will be quite successful. I can, I can promise you that. And I think this will become clear in the later latter half of this video. Okay, the next milestone I can think of is dated back to early 2020, or I should say March 2022. So the COVID crash, which was kind of like if you discount the 2018 tech, tech crash, this was the first real stock market crash that I experienced. And here I learned a few things about myself. I think I realized that I actually might have the genes to be a, a good investor. Of course, during that yeah, time of turmoil, I still remember actually watching CNBC every single day and everyone was like going crazy. Outbreak. It's a very fast moving situation. There it is. Let's get to Bob Pisani and see where we are in the circuit breakers, Bob. Good evening, I'm Kelly Evans. I'm Scott Wapner. This is the 63rd day of this massive global health crisis. And I, I, I was quite quite calm, I have to say. And I was even excited, which I think is a good, good thing. So I was actually watching the major stock market indices dropping, I don't know, between 5 to 8% on, on some days with excitement. I was looking forward to the opportunities Mr. Market had for me. And luckily back then I also had significant dry powder. So I, so I actually had some cash saved up that I didn't deploy yet that I could then put to work. And I actually also started to appreciate the um, option value that comes with having cash in your portfolio. I actually made some really good investments back then. So I can actually show you on the screen right now because I always document all of the uh, buy and sell decisions I made. So what I was buying back then was, let, let's just have a quick look. So pre this was pretty much, I think, close to the bottom in March. So on, on March 16th and 17th, I was buying stocks like Southwest Airlines, Micron, Amazon, Visa, Capri Holdings, which I talked about in some of my previous videos and which was probably one of the best investments I ever made. Uh, we have Booking.com, Alibaba, Facebook, as it was called back then, and Google as well. But it, what I should also say is that another lesson I learned in this stock market crash is that trying to time the market can be quite dangerous. So. I also sold a few stocks in late February. So this was Apple. And I also sold a few Facebook shares um, on the 20th of February as well. I was selling Craft Tech 2 at a loss also. Um, and I think looking back at it, this was kind of a poor attempt of myself, myself to, to try to time the market. And I actually was quite lucky the way it worked out. But I think, I don't know, I, I was just selling the stocks for non-fundamental reasons, which I think is most of the times a really bad idea because what you are essentially trying to do is you're trying to time the market. All right, let's get back to the milestone. So milestone number six was actually starting my YouTube channel. I was previous, previously talking about how teaching people about a specific topic can be quite valuable and obviously creating content for YouTube is kind of another outlet for that. And I have to say that I'm so glad that I found YouTube and maybe social media in general as kind of a cre creative outlet for myself because most of the time, maybe 90% of the time, I really enjoy the whole process of researching topics, sometimes writing a script, recording the video. Maybe I enjoy the editing part the most, sometimes um, creating a thumbnail, writing a title, getting in touch with other people from the community. So I'm really glad that I started this hobby. And I think it also helped me grow as an investor, I should say. The only downside of YouTube is maybe that, I don't know, I feel like highly educational content doesn't work. So you oftentimes can only touch the surface, surface can maybe only teach some core fundamental principles. And I guess now my mentorship program, which I talk about next, now is my outlet to actually teach more advanced concepts. All right, next step. This chapter can maybe be called peak net worth. So it was in early 2021. Um, we were basically at the height of the everything bubble, I would say. And this is where I, for the first time, crossed the $100,000 threshold, which is kind of a milestone. I, I was quite happy with where I was at at that time. So that's, if you do the math, like, I hope I don't get this wrong. That's like not even three years into my investing journey. And to put this into context, so I think I, I have a decent job, I have a decent salary, but not, not spectacularly high. I just live somewhat modestly. I saved a lot of money, I invested it intelligently, and then I, I just waited. And obviously the market being in a bubble and almost everything going up helped as well. 
but as I just used the, the term bubble, I think this was also the start of, of maybe another period that taught me something, patience. Because in early 2021, many tech stocks started to, 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 to decline. And I guess one of the biggest losers or poorest decisions I made back then was not selling Etsy. I think it was in, in early 2021 when the stock was trading at 50 times through cash flow. I made the mistake of not selling, being too optimistic about the business maybe also being being wrong on on the business development um not being critical enough on on management and i think i sold this stock in 2023 and while i did not lose a, a lot of money on it i think my my average cost basis was around 120 dollars. it was a really big position for me back then because at some point i think it was trading close to 300 dollars a share and i was really thinking about selling it but i know it it's really hard to sell when when a stock just keeps going up. So yeah, it took me a while. It took me quite a long while to, to cross the $100,000 uh, threshold again, uh, even though I was contributing consistently to my portfolio. So I would say um, 2021 and 2022 were, were rougher years because the stock market was yeah maybe in a, in a tougher environment. Which brings me to my next milestone, which was mid-2022, which is where I actually finished my program. <laughs> As, as you might remember in, when was it, mid 2019, I started working on the website. And as you can see, for, for three years, I was working on it almost every single day. And I think I think working all, on all of these chapters and sub chapters and like listening to a lot of podcasts, as I said, reading books, taking notes on what I wanted to include in my program, this was a very valuable experience for me. And earlier I mentioned that early on when you learn a lot in a relatively short period of time, there is the risk of becoming overconfident. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Dunning-Kruger effect. I, I can just show you the the way this curve develops on screen right now. But especially early on when you know very little, you can easily feel like you know a lot. Like To give you just a few examples here, once you understand if, uh, how valuation multiples work, and you might feel like that you have fully understood how valuation works. The same is true for using a discounted cash flow method. You might now feel like a master because you, you understand how this tool works, but you may not fully comprehend the nuances of, say, both of these tools, DCF and valuation multiples, and maybe the drawbacks that come with each approach. And now looking back at what I knew back then three years ago, I actually realized that I knew relatively little. Um, I think the way I approached investing back then, just paying low multiples for high quality businesses, well, this still works. Um, but nowadays, I understand that high multiple stocks can also be quite attractive investments, maybe because the company has a lot of growth ahead of it, maybe they because there's a lot of margin expansion to be expected, uh, just to name two examples here. So all I'm trying to say is that over this three-year period, I really grew as an investor. Then almost one year later, I found the courage to actually launch my mentoring program, which is the ninth milestone on, on my personal journey so far. As I kind of indicated earlier, I'm quite excited about now working closely with yeah, a few select people who have completely different backgrounds and goals. So the diversity of, of the group is actually something that Ellen, one of the people I work with, actually highlighted in an interview with me. I, I believe our group is quite diverse in terms of age, culture, you know, goals and learning style what, what i really like that <clears throat> you didn't put us under one umbrella and you you let us you know to learn in our own pace the first reviews actually now coming in so you can check them out on my youtube channel as well i mean i work as a teacher in my main main job so you can probably tell that that teaching and helping people improve is, is some something that i um really enjoy all right and then the 10th step is kind of it's a question mark, like what's ahead? I'm sure there are many more milestones ahead, many lessons I have to learn, many setbacks that I will have to overcome, many more successes, like I've shared in my Q&A video, for example, that 2023, unlike 2022 and 2021, has been a spectacularly good year for, for me and my portfolio. I'm super happy with the way my portfolio is set up right now. Some of the biggest positions right now are uh, Matter, which obviously has, has been one of my best investments ever. It's, one, it's also my biggest position now. Uh, then we've got Wix and Nintendo and Interactive Brokers, some truly great businesses, I think. And I think I was able to start and initiate these positions at great prices, which does not mean, just to be clear, that I would buy them at their current prices. 
So yeah, I can only encourage you to watch my 2024 goals video. And where's the finish line for me on this journey? I don't know. On, I quite frankly believe that the journey is the goal here. I hope I can continue to enjoy this process. And yeah, let me know what, what your investing journey looks like so far. What in particular you enjoy about this journey, where you at, at right now, what are your current challenges right now. So yeah, that's it for today. Take care and see you in one of my next videos.